lots of comments coming in, which I'm very thankful for because it gives me material to do videos. I hope people really take the time to watch the video that I did using the dry erase board with the kindergarten type of graphics and stuff to explicate how this works here. It works the same as your house or something, someone coming into your house. There are terms and conditions. It's like people are so, <clears throat> are any of you out there familiar with an author named Robert E. Howard? Robert E. Vern Howard? I'm gonna wait a minute to see how many people out there are familiar with that author's name. He was uh, an author, pretty sure he was born in Texas, early in the 1900s, maybe late 1800s, late 1800s. I know he died. I'm pretty sure he died in the 1920s. Robert E. Vern Howard created one of the most iconic sword and sorcery characters ever of all time. And that character's name was Conan the Barbarian. I know a lot of people out there associate Arnold Schwarzenegger with the Conan character. But to those of us who were diehard Robert E. Howard fans, who read those original Robert E. Howard stories about Conan that were published in uh, pulp magazines back in the 20s, back during World War I, the character that Conan plays has nothing really to do with the character that Robert E. Howard created. I mean, obviously, Arnold looks like a bodybuilder. Otter, uh, during At the time that the movie was made, Arnold was a testament to modern chemistry. I'm sure he was doing a nice little cycle stack of whatever he was doing. Which, by the way, that's a, that's a common sports science term now. Why does he look like that? Oh, he must be on the Arnold's, meaning steroids or TRT or whatever. That's not what Conan looked like. Anyhow, I digress. The reason I mentioned Conan is because he has a quote where he says something. Or Robert E. Howard actually said it, not Conan. Although the, the two do kind of get mixed up sometimes because the personality of Conan is much like the personality of Robert E. Howard. Robert E. Howard said, Civilized man has gotten too comfortable uh, with the idea of insulting people with no repercussions. They would never do that to a barbarian. Because if you insult a barbarian, you better be ready to get your skull split. And that's the way it is today. And that's why I think people are so disrespectful when they come onto a comments field on any social media. You can see it. And social media, people are so disrespectful, no consideration. They just want to argue, insult, criticize, condescend, judge, and so on and so forth. Not here, folks. Not here. You're not going to do that here. It's not the way it works. You're not going to do it in my house. You're not going to do it on my channel. You're not going to do it to me on the street. I triple dog dare you to try. <laughs> It's just people, this, the, the generation, it, and it's not like it wasn't planned. People's spines have just been gradually disintegrated, it seems like. No backbone, no willpower, no nothing. Whining about everything. But I digress again. I, I said that twice. I got to stop saying that. Um, so I hope people watch that video, take it to heart. I'm not trying to make people frightened of commenting. What I'm trying to do is to get people to get courageous and get their forensic skills in order. Be aware when you go somewhere, what the terms and conditions are. To go back to the sob sit thing and the common law people, back when the uh, convid thing was happening, you know, the pandemic, however you want to 
phrase it or describe it. People would get into all these arguments about putting a, a covering over your face when you go into a supermarket. People would get into arguments. So I'm not doing that. And people were getting arrested, chased around. It just made things miserable. And from my point of view, I'm looking at it like this. <clears throat> I see a store. Let's call that store Myers. Okay, it's a supermarket. If I want to go into Myers, that, that that's not my store. It's not a public store either. It's a privately owned uh, corporation that sells goods to the public. So it invites the public in to their vessel, their venue. And to do that, there are terms and conditions in place when you walk over that threshold. What's the most famous one? No shirt, no shoes, no service. It's been around forever, since the 50s. Because people used to go into stores with no shirt and no shoes. That changed. Okay. Same thing happens today. It does not matter how you feel about it. If they want you to put a whole ass plastic bag over your body to go in that store and shop, then it's contingent upon you to honor those terms and conditions if you want to cross that threshold. Because there's always a choice to say, no, thanks. I'll go somewhere else. I don't need to go on your vessel. I'm not putting that bag. I'm not comfortable with that. Bye. No problem. No problem. No problem. Or maybe you have a friend or a relative or someone who loves putting plastic bags over their bodies. You say, hey, I'll give, if I give you some cash, you'll get me this, 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 and the third. And they go do it for you, and then you get your food and whatever. There's so many solutions to this rather than arguing and making other people's lives miserable, such as the workers and employees of those places like buyers who had to sit there for at least eight hours, but probably more like 12 to 13 hours a day dealing with jerks like those people who want to come in and argue about things like that. Just another perspective, that's all. Common courtesy, consideration. Now, for my part, um, yes, I did put a face covering on sometimes, depending upon where I was. I did it like a couple times, and then I figured, you know what? I'm going to try something different. And so I started going in with no covering, wearing my CPAS C treaty. And no one said anything to me. No one even approached me. So I just got used to not wearing one of those things. And uh, everything was fine. But I had like a handkerchief in my pocket ready. Be like, okay, if it makes you comfortable, if it won't get you in trouble, if you're not going to get written up or reprimanded, if it will prevent you from being written up and reprimanded, I'm saying this to the employee. I'll, I'll put this on. Cool. Whatever. I'm only going to be here for five minutes anyways. I don't care. My ego is not so huge that I have to make everyone around me conform to my worldview. <laughs> I'm not saying my ego is not larger or anything like that, but I'm saying it's not so large that I'm inconsiderate of other people. And that's what's funny about these common law fellows. And well, I've never met a female that that is a proponent of common law. It's usually a very masculine male. And they will Yeah, they they just want everybody to think the way that they think. And if you don't, they will argue and mitigate your socks off. So far, I have not said one thing about correct sentence structure, I don't think. So we're going to have to knock that off right now. <coughs> and uh, start talking about the grammar. 
So my plans for the grammar for this new year, as I'm getting my health back and things like that, I'm actually formulating a plan to do a little bit of traveling, perhaps. I'm floating this idea because my wife and I love to go to Tennessee, Florida. I love Arizona, but it's so far away. I'd love to go over there. Texas. I've got friends in Texas. And maybe put together an impromptu in-person seminar. But I would have to know that there would be people there that would buy the tickets that would make it worthwhile for me to invest my personal value in getting a venue to do that. Whether that's a hotel, conference room, or whether it's someone's living room, wherever, a college campus, doesn't matter to me. As long as at least a dozen people show up, a dozen people, 12 people. And I would just put on an impromptu seminar for maybe three hours, maybe four hours, depending upon, you know, the type of people that are there, the type of questions that are being asked, the caliber of intellect that would attend such a thing. I would base my curriculum upon that. I've actually, since I've been teaching for six years now, I've gotten quite skillful at improvising because every workshop that I do is tailored towards the student. There is no one size fits all. That's why there's never been a successful correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar curriculum. You folks remember that one reaction video I did for that guy from Russell J. Gould's vent, uh, sector where he was charging a million dollars for a syntax lesson. <laughs> charging one million dollars for a syntax lesson. I wouldn't charge a million dollars for a syntax lesson. I might charge 500,000. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, we got a question. Ooh, how exciting. Scott Hilmer says, how does this affect current fraudulent contracts? Now, I ask you folks to be very specific and laser-like with your questions because I have to guess what Scott means by this. I'm guessing he means quantum grammar. So first, Scott, you would have to learn correct sentence structure in order to fully cognize what I'm about to say. But I'm going to answer your question anyways. If you feel you're being ripped off, something's unfair about a contract that you have right now, and you have evidence of this, of the damage that said contract has done to you, you can potentially use correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar to create a document contract postal vessel court venue. You know, requisite with flag mechanic, correct flag mechanics, postal mechanics, banking mechanics, grammar mechanics, i.e. you have to know the grammar. You are the author of it. Or you have someone else take authority over your contract and they write it for you if they know correct sentence structure. You would take the fraudulent, the thing that you perceive to be a fraudulent contract, you would have to commandeer that vessel. You would have to point out all the modification in it because changes, modification, modification is perjury. You point out the perjury, the fictitious conveyance of grammar, or to use a stronger term, fraudulent conveyance of grammar. And you would put that in a nice little package, create your own federal postal court. Most importantly, you must have a correct claim of the live life. And by correct claim of the live life, I mean a live life claim that you authored and that you hold the copyright copy claim to. Listen to that last part back if you listen to this live stream again. You must have that in place in order to do what I just told you you could do. Potentially. 
But the first thing is the grammar. The first step is the grammar. But if you know the grammar and you can do all those things, then it's like swatting a fly with a wrecking ball, as Colin David Ivan Cole Miller used to say. You can stop bureaucratic trespass and damage using this grammar. <laughs> um, April's definitely one of the individuals, as well as Ivondian, if he's still here. Those two members, they're members of this channel, which thank you very much for your membership and your support. Those two individuals can definitely do what I just uh, explained. Like, well, I don't know if they've ever done it. Maybe Ivondian has. Maybe Ivondian has. They could potentially do it. They, I don't think they would have a problem doing it. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Let's put it that way. You just have to pick something. I think the first thing that I picked, which is not the wisest thing in the world to do back in 2017, I picked a state tax entity to fight. Not fight, but to, to stop the trespass of. That's what I picked. And I didn't even have closure on syntax back then. But I was successful. And because of that, it galvanized me to study more. And it took me about 2,000 hours to even get to the point where I could use it. Would my claim of life affect my wife via wedding license? Again, Scott, all the things I'm telling you, these questions are coming from, it tells me that you really have no knowledge of correct sentence structure at all. Like you have no idea what it is or what it does. So short answer is no, it wouldn't. Because a wedding license is a fiction license. It's in the fiction, has nothing to do with correct sentence structure. A wedding is a jointer between you, your wife, and the state. It's a threesome. <laughs> so it's you're married to the state and to your wife at the same time. The state is the authority of that. Because what is a license? Whether it's a driving license or a marriage license, it's a permit you pay for to do something that would otherwise be considered illegal. So that's all fiction stuff. No, it won't affect that. Jason, Gwendo, you are going to do a new webinar. It was very good, the one I participated in. And I think a webinar on Parse and Deep and How to Create a Contract Document. Post was a core venue would be very interesting topic to cover in a webinar. <coughs> Certainly, I found him. The parse thing, I agree 100% with. That's easy. That's the easiest part for me and for most of the students that I've had over the years. That's the easiest part of the grammar. Anybody can do it. Hell, even Mark Cachon Christopher can parse, for God's sakes. Did I just curse? I'm sorry. For Odin's sake. Um, even Mark can do it. So it's pretty easy to parse. So it's it would be easy to create content for that in a webinar. But as far as creating document contract postal visa court venues, the only way I would do a webinar on that is if I vetted the people first. Like you, of course, would be able to attend that because you have closure on the grammar. April would be able to attend that. Numerous other people that have closure on the grammar could do it. But someone like Scott could not attend because it wouldn't help them in any, it, it could actually get someone like Scott in trouble because they don't know the grammar. So that's that's kind of the fine line you got to walk here, or I have to walk here because it's I'm accountable. I don't I don't want to get people in trouble. I don't want to put careless data out there and get people in trouble. I've been very careful thus far, and I'm not going to start being careless now. I did do a mini class on the creation of a document contract postal vessel core venue, but that's about the extent of the data that I would put out there about it. I wouldn't go into, you know, laser-like specifics in a public place because it could get people into trouble. <clears throat> I don't know if y'all saw that dictionary I held up. 
that dictionary is from the 1800s. It's a Webster's Dictionary from the 1800s. So it's over 200 years old. Over 200 years old. Anybody have any grammar questions? Ivandian, I know that... Uh, I'm pretty sure you had a couple questions. If you think that it's uh, it's bueno for a public forum, go ahead and ask a question here. If not, you can save it for tomorrow. It's up to you, my friend. Also, again, I want to shout out to Daryl Bennett out there. Daryl, if you're watching this, much love, my man. Thank you for all your kind words and all your positive comments and the light you bring to the community. Keep coming back, man. I admire your will and tenacity. Hold on here. Good day. Just saw this. Is there going to be another workshop? The five-footer, that's up to you if you want to do another workshop. Uh, the workshops are available if you contact me at the email address. Uh, there's no email address down there. In the description of the video, you contact me at the email address and apply for a workshop. Please include your full correct name. And I'll get back to you, schedule a consultation, and then uh, you can do a workshop with me if you uh, qualify for it. That's how the workshops work. I always do workshops, and I just started doing workshops this week again. So uh, it's up to you whether there's going to be another workshop for you, because I think we did one. I have a gift for you I'm going to send you. I have transcribed that mini class and translated it into quantum Spanish. I'm going to send it to you so you can see some questions. All right. That sounds awesome. That is so cool. Keep in mind, though, Spanish is a language. Correct sentence structure is a grammar. Two separate things. But I, I know what you mean, my friend. Quantum English, quantum Spanish. I get it. You know, I, I mentioning his name, I got curious about Marcus Sean Christopher, because I know he got kicked off of YouTube. And I would just like to see what he's up to. The group seminar. Thank you. No, Preston, workshops and seminars are two completely different things. A workshop is what you would apply for. As a singular individual, you and I, it's a, like a classroom. It's like you're taking a class, a single individual class. That's what a workshop is. A seminar is different. A seminar is for a group of people. Okay? That's two different things. So you said workshop. So in my mind, I was thinking about, oh, you know, the workshops that I offer. If you email me and apply for a workshop. Uh, I schedule a 10 to 15 minute video consultation and then you apply for it. And then I either approve it or don't approve it or you approve it or don't approve it. And then we move on. I send you the you know, materials. You send me donations and, and we do a one hour workshop. That's the workshop. A seminar is completely different. A seminar is a different thing. It's like apples and oranges. So I'm looking at Mark's website right now. I'm just looking at uh, Mark's <laughs> website. Woo. If you want to. Wow. I wish I could screen share this with you. Is there a way to do that on here? Let me see if I can figure it out. In no way. Ah, Jens, good to see you, my friend. Thank you very much for your membership. And Jens asks, what are your thoughts on how AI can help someone in the space of quantum grammar, please? My thoughts on that is it's no help at all. I have actually, I did a video on this, Jens, last year maybe maybe earlier this year, where I challenged an AI to learn correct sentence structure, and they failed miserably. 
I participated with chat GP or whatever the hell it's called. And I did the same thing. And it just cannot grasp correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Cannot grasp the mathematical interface on grammar. I know as strange as that sounds, it's true. And Jens, you know it well enough, I think, that you'll be able to find the same result. Um, you'll be able to figure the same thing out if you challenge it. It just cannot. The thing, the problem is, is it cannot syntax, first of all, because it cannot differentiate or credential what a tangible contract word is versus a non-tangible contract word. It cannot grasp the for the of the verb with the of the with the by the patterns and how those things work and the positional sequencing. It doesn't know what a positional is, a lodial is. It thinks it knows what a fact is, but it doesn't. So yes, I've done experiments with that over the last year or so, and they've all failed miserably. And I have tried every which way, shape, or form to get it to create a correct sentence structure, and it just can't do it. It might be able to do like a little simple one, like for the claim, of the claim, is with the claim, by the claimant, something like that. But there's no way that it can do what a human brain can do. I mistyped grammar question. Why in the proper name with the full colon after the middle name is this not considered a break in the continuum? In the continuum? You mean continuance of evidence? Because it's correct sentence structure, Preston. In correct sentence structure, you give closure to everything you're doing. In a colon, in correct sentence structure, represents a positional lodial phrase. Which if you, as you mentioned earlier about workshops, if you want to do workshops, you can learn this stuff with me. Or you can study the 900 videos on this channel and figure out the same thing if you go to the correct sentence structure playlist. I ex especially in the videos where I explain how to write a correct name. I explain the, the, the colon. I explain the period. So on and so the hyphen. All those things are explicated. And I elucidate, elucidate the viewer upon those things. So when you say, for the Preston hyphen Henry of the Boyd, okay. Now the second thing you wrote was for the Preston hyphen Henry colon Boyd, which you've put a full colon in sandwiched in between two tangible contract words. So that is not correct sentence structure because the function of a colon is to represent a position lodial phrase. And when you put words on paper, you would have a space between a single space between each word. So it would be if you wrote it out in words, for, space, the, space, Preston hyphen Henry, space, of, space, the, space, Boyd, period. The way you wrote it the second way, it would be for, space, of, space, Preston hyphen Henry, colon, Boyd, period. But you put a colon in there. So that wrecks the whole thing because you would have to read it like, for space of four space the space Preston hyphen Henry of the with no spaces boy. You see what I'm saying? It makes no sense. Let me write it out. It would it would look ridiculous. I'm gonna write it in the chat. That's how it would look if you didn't put the colons in there. The colons represent position lodial phrases. And if you were to take, I don't know if you've, I think you've taken a workshop with me, but if you would actually progress to the second workshop at some point in time, I do give you a lesson on the full colon and how it's used, which that information is also available for free on this YouTube channel. Just look up uh, study of the full colon. Okay, back to this uh, Mark lowercase k. 
Oh, I was trying to figure out if I could share my screen. Let me just darn it. That's why I like TikTok better, but I mean TikTok it's just too weird for me sometimes. Anyway, so it has colon federal hyphen postal hyphen court hyphen cases, and then it has a dangling participle colon. There is no, absolutely no correct sentence structure on the federal port, postal court cases page of Mark Lowercase K's website. No correct sentence structure at all. There's a lot of names on here, though. No hyphens. Erratic use of colons. This guy is dangerous. I don't even want to look at this. It's making me a headache. <clears throat> Let me understand correct sentence structure claim of the of life takes me out of fiction into correct sentence structure now space. Let you understand. Um Scott, I'm not going to let you understand it. You can understand if you want to or not to. I'm not going to, you know, you don't have to ask permission for that type of stuff. What the claim of the live life is, is first of all, it's an instrument of witnessing. I do have a video on this. You know what? I'm just going to share that link. I know you're here in the now space and I, I do want to give you the closure that you're asking for. However, I also would like to share this link because... I would like to state and repeat that any question you have can be answered by you actively taking the now space to study this channel by using the search bar function of your YouTube website. So I'm going to actually use it and look up live life claim. And... I got 13 results alone off of my own channel. And I'm going to share the mini class for you. There you go. Save that link. <coughs> so, okay, the claim of the live life is basically three or more live life claimants who have correct live life claims coming together to witness you as a living, breathing creature. And I'm using plain, simple English to, to describe this. What it does is it gives you copyright, copy claim stewardship over your punctuated name. And you have three or more witnesses witnessing you being connected to that name. And it gives the facts of your life, whether you're male, you're female, when you were physically birthed into this domain, what that location was, what your mother's name was, what, how, you know, whatever other facts you want to put on there, you can put on there. Using correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. So. What this means is once you have this document in place, you are now a steward of all of your contracts if you have closure on the grammar and can use it like that. Well, maybe not like that. Maybe like this. If you can use it like that, you'll be successful. But of course, it's much better if you can use it like that. I'm just in a funny mood. Okay, so... That's how it works. And if the fiction is trespassing upon you, you can use that correct name because who is anyone to tell you what your name is? Like when you walk into court, the you know, the David Wynn Miller thing where the judge says, what is your name? Is the judge telling you your name is what? Or are they asking you a question? It's all word games in there. So this live life claim coupled with your knowledge and with the knowledge of postal mechanics, banking mechanics, and flag mechanics can get can can extricate you from those scenarios so that you now do the same thing, basically, create the same type of venue that the fiction does, 
but with closure on grammar. And that's what's so potent about it is that you take jurisdiction over everything that you're doing. You are the master of your vessel with that punctuated name. You authorized it because you are the author of the document. That's why I'm, I try to tell people, if someone else writes your live life claim, if someone else writes your documents, you are not the author. Therefore, you don't have authority over it. Many thanks. Coming back to AI, I was thinking of parts and preparation in the grammar area like support in defining finite mean structure dictionary or STH like this. Personally, I would never use AI to help do a finite mean. I prefer to use the more grassroots etymology dictionaries. I don't want to rely on chat GP saying, oh, we, you know, they, they collected this from all these sources all over the internet. No, I don't want that. I want to go to the source myself. I prefer it that way, but hey, let me know about uh, how it works out for you there, Jens. If it's beneficial to you, uh, more than welcome to share it with me. Scott, um, I do want to say that it is critical that you have closure on the grammar before you do anything like what I'm saying. Although you don't have to have closure on correct sentence structure to have a live life claim, you definitely have to have closure on correct sentence structure in order to use a live life claim. For example, if you have closure on the grammar, you can create live life claims for your children with you as the authority. Especially if it's a baby, the baby's not going to know correct sentence structure, but you know it. So you can be the postmaster, the bank banker, the judge of that live life claim, and you take authority over them until such time that they can take authority over themselves if they so choose and create a, a new claim of the live life with them as the authority. Whatever age you deem that to be, most people feel it's 18. I mean, that's open to... If you, if you want to be a 16-year-old and be in a, a live life claimant and be the authority of your own life and do this stuff, I mean, that's completely up to you. If you have the chest putt to do that, who am I to say not to do it? I would strongly advise against it, but hey, there are some exceptional individuals out there. Namely, that 15-year-old federal postal judge that Russell J. Gould tells a story about, right? Anybody remember that story? Russell said he knew a 15-year-old that was a federal postal judge. <laughs> and then a couple of years later, he comes out and says, why, you have to study for 15 years to be a federal postal judge. Oh, really? So I guess that 15-year-old postal judge that he was talking about must have been studying since he popped out of the damn womb. So goofy. These stories are so goofy sometimes. I can't believe people eat them up like they do. I mean, I can believe it. I'm just babbling here. All right. Well, this is fun. I appreciate everybody being here. I'm going to be publishing another comments video pretty soon here because, as I said, I've been getting a lot of comments. Anybody else have any other questions they'd like to ask? Questions, comments, criticisms? Well wishes. Donations, gifts, super chats. I appreciate it all. Bears repeating that if I don't get up to six thousand subscribers by January 1st 2024 I will cease producing public content on this channel and right now we are at 5736 so that's about 300 or so more subscribers uh, that I need 
to uh, PayPal. You know what, Scott? Um, I do have a PayPal now. I was using PayPal, and then they changed their terms and conditions, and so I totally got rid of it for about a year or two. But then I just recently opened it back up because so many people want to use it for some reason. But I'll tell you this. I prefer it if you, if we just do private banking. Okay? I don't know how much you know about banking. But if you email me, I can give you details on how to send a donation if you want to. A donation or a gift. Because that's what it is, donation gift. That's the way I navigate and that way, there's really no third party involved in it. But it's up to you. Um, if you look down in the right-hand corner, or we could say the lower starboard side corner of your computer screen, you can see the dollar sign down there. It's really easy if you have, you know, internet purchasing power to click that and uh, send donations that way. I appreciate all that. But anyways, I will continue to produce members only content for the tier two members of loyalists and contributors, but I will no longer do public content. And I'll also do members only live streams like the one I'm doing now, only it will be for members. So let's see. I tried to use the GPT chat to find in the Spanish Civil Code article homologous to the regla section 12B7, 12B1 that you use in the mini class. That's actually United States Civil. I mean, the origin of that in the fiction is the United States. <coughs> Civil Code, which has been adapted to, well, it was adapted to correct sentence structure by Russell and David, and then I further corrected it for my own use, the 12B7 through 12B1, because it's a great way to create a claim. It gives you all the mechanics, the venue of the flag, the service of the methods, methods, methods of the service, the jurisdiction, the authority, all that stuff. It misled me, gave me articles that have nothing to do with what I went to check. Yeah, I don't know if such if there's an equivalent in your Spain in your uh in Spain civil code. I don't know if they have a 12b7 through 12b1. But again, Ivandian, that doesn't matter. Whether it's Spanish in Spain or whether it's in the past tense United States, 12b7 through 12b1 as I use it has nothing to do with the country. It has to do with correct sentence structure. And the flag of the land during the time of the contract. That's the way I use it. I can Google it right now and it'll come right up. What did I get myself into here? Okay, Cornell University. Okay, I see where they got it from now. I remember this now. So, in the Legal Information Institute from Cornell, they say <clears throat> under the uh, Rule 12, defenses and objections, when and how presented, motion for judgment on pleadings, consolidating motions, waiving defenses, pretrial hearing, which is rule 12. You scroll all the way down and it says, you'll see the letter B in parentheses and it says how to present defenses. Every defense to a claim for relief in any pleading must be asserted in a responsive pleading if one is required, but a party may assert the following defenses by motion. And this is the 12B7 to 12B1 that was translated by David and Russell and then further corrected by me. 
Number one, lack of subject matter jurisdiction. Number two, lack of personal jurisdiction. Number three, improper venue. Four, insufficient process. Five, insufficient service of process. Six, failure to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. And seven, failure to join a party under Rule 19, which... What in the hell is Rule 19? Required joinder of parties. Required party, a person who is subject to the service of a process and whose joinder will not deprive the court of subject matter jurisdiction must be joined as a party if, in that person's absence, the court cannot accord complete relief among existing parties or that person claims an interest relating to the subject of the action is so situated that disposing of the action in the person's absence makes Jesus. Wow. See, reading this stuff gives me a headache. I don't even want to go into it. It's just a bunch of BS as far as I'm concerned. I'd rather read other stuff. So let me pull up my corrected 12B7 through 12B1 and compare and contrast. And then I'll shut this down. I'm going to my Weebly website because I know I posted it here. There we go. So for the summary corrections of the civil claim methods are with the 12B by the document contract claims. So in the fiction, the first one is lack of subject matter jurisdiction. In the fact, it is for the, hold on, it's backwards, sorry. For the 12B1 of the document contract claim is with the knowledge of the correct language performance with the oite of the quantum grammar mechanics with the correct syntax of the positional and five lodial and six fact and seven phrase comma verb and two and of the conjunction and zero with the correct sentence structure claims of the facts with the contract court authority and jurisdiction of the corrections with the corporation case of the facts with the certification by the permanent authority and judge or by the continuous standing. I put standing in brackets, by the way. Authority and judge for the continuance of the fact data, i.e. evidence, because evidence is no contract. I put that in brackets. Is with the correction claim of the fiction Grammar fraud with the mass certification of the now space syntax with the damages of the fictional grammar and of the case numbers and of the writ fiction grammar fraud orders with the plea of the opinions, guess, presumption, sick, assumption, sick, or of the oath perjury with the fictions of the writ with the knowledge by the Vassalese. That's basically authorization claim with authority, 12B1. Compare that with lack of subject matter jurisdiction. Number two, lack of personal jurisdiction. And the fact that is authority of the matter. For the 12B2 of the document contract claim is with the contract court of the contract persons with the live life claim of the claimant with the claims of the correct sentence structure with the port joinder of the courtroom judge and jurisdiction with the case by this claim. For the court of the jurisdictions with the statement of the damage claim with the correct sentence structure by the court. And by the court, folks, doesn't mean a foreign vessel in dry dock. It means you. You created the court with 
you know, whatever document you have or whatever you want to make a court. You can make uh, that little grove under the tree out there your court if you want to. A circle of stones could be your court. It could be a garage. It could be a basement. It could be a closet. You know, a court anywhere you want to if you're the authority of your construct. Next one, three, improper venue. So the 12B3 is with the correct venue, which position of venue, of the claimant's correct sentence structure contract with the authority and jurisdiction of the correct sentence structure with the correct rules by this claim for the flag rule of the modifications, sick, or of the changes is with the claims of the sanctions with the foreign vessel of the modifications with the color, matter, body, size, or with the shape of the fictional oite with the language, syntax method of the adjective sick, pronoun sick, or of the verb with the modification by this claim for the traps of the titles, names, dates, case numbers, italic words, sick, boxes, and title sites are with the fiction, grammar, fraud, or the writ with the autograph by the Vassalis. That's 12B3. 12B4, insufficient process. For the 12B4, of the document contract claim is with the correct method of the Vassili's paperwork construction with the rules of the service with the performance by the correct sentence structure mechanics. For the oity of the adverb sick, adjective sick, and of the pronoun sick is with the salvage claim of the papers with the postage stamp by the contract court period. That's methods of the service. <coughs> five, insufficient service process. 12B5. Is with the correct method and with the livery of the correct sentence structure case documents, with certification of the method and service with the clerk of the court, with the file of the paperwork, with the correct syntax claim of the contract court, with certification by this claim for the method of the fiction grammar fraud, with use of adjectives, pronouns, or verbs as a noun, is with the claim of a performance with the mail fraud of the title 18, section 1341, with the fictitious oity of the syntax with the fraud by the method. In other words, that's service of the methods. Now, when that says clerk of the court right there, it doesn't mean necessarily the clerk down at your foreign vessel and dry dock. For me, my federal postal court that I'm the authority of, my clerk is down at the postal station about three minutes away from my house. That's my court clerk. They're also a custom clearinghouse broker. Six, failure to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. 12B6 of the document contract claim is with the correct sentence structure claim of the cause with the contract of the authority and jurisdiction with the claims of the damages by the claimants and by the Vassalis, i.e. statement of the claim. So you have to state your claim. And then 12B1, lack of subject matter jurisdiction. 12B7. Claims of the same authority and jurisdiction with the rule of the flag by the contract terms. For the rule of the contract parties is with the terms of the vessel's contract, with the label of the pictograph and symbol, with the flag of the contract, with the terms of the contract rules, with the completion of the contract with the contract court by this claim. So the pictograph symbol, the label, that's the flag. The 1 by 1.9 flag, folks. That's what's so important. That's the one of the most important things. That's what I mean by flag mechanics. And if you're going to use that flag, you must have, well, you must have closure on that flag's constitution. You have to have a cognition and understanding of it. What it is, what it means, what it does. And you have to be able to possess the ability to articulate that to an outside contract party. Otherwise, how, how are you going to use this? How? If you don't have closure on it. Bottom line, learn the grammar, folks. If you're here to learn the grammar, you're in the right place. I'm going to leave my email address in brackets in the chat. <clears throat> for anyone who wants to email me and apply for a workshop. 
You notice in my videos when I write my email address out, it's colon tilde Jason Matthew G17 at gmail.com, period. And there are individuals out there who try to type the colon tilde and the period at the end into their email address box in their fiction email address box, and then it comes back as invalid address. I thought that people would know, oh, that's you know just correct sentence structure. If we're going to use it in fiction, then um, you would take that out and just put Jason Matthew G17 at gmail.com. But no, not everybody knows that. Not everybody knows that. Has anyone out there ever typed out an email address that started with a colon and a tilde and ended with a period ever in life? Have you ever? Just, just curious. If you have, hit me up and let me know because I've never seen it. And I've been emailing for, damn, a long time. Peace. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.